If I was a CEO of a big OEM, I'd be, um, I'd be wetting my shorts right now. That slide is everything that says, uh, if, you, if you're investing in ICE vehicles, you're screwed. And the boneheads that are, are saying, oh yeah, we're gonna sell short. Those clowns, I have no idea, they're not engineers. I don't know who they are, but they're not engineers. I couldn't believe it when I saw that the stock went down. That thing should be skyrocketing. That should I be to the moon. Are you kidding? What you just heard was the gospel of, according to EV. I can't believe how excited we are here at Monroe. My prediction, 2030, that's the end. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So Sandy Munro, who I'm sure you all know by now, recently spoke with Autoline Network after Tesla's battery investor day, sharing his thoughts on Tesla's current technology, their new battery tech, and also some of their amazing manufacturing and engineering genius. So put your engineering hats on and let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get a free stock, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account and fund it with $100, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using a link in the description. Let's get back to it. Anybody can make a prototype. Manufacturing is hard. He said it like three, four, five times. That's a real key. I can make anything work once. Maybe Wall Street didn't like it, but Wall Street's, I mean, really and truly, they've got a lot of people there that uh, that are analysts and things like that. And they, they look at stuff in, a t in an entirely different way. For me, last night, if I was a CEO of a big OEM, I'd be, um, I'd be wetting my shorts right now because this is, this is a turning point. 50% loss cost, 59% more energy and whatnot. This, this is ridiculous. And not only that, it weighs less. Now I can see a $25,000 car that's worth basically driving. I don't need to have the solid state battery anymore. I got this thing. I'll take that all day long. Like a 50% weight loss, I, I'll take that all day long. Once again, Sandy Munro, the expert of experts when it comes to automotive engineering and manufacturing is blown away by Tesla's tech. And I think it's being a little bit delicate with the Wall Street analysts, so let me be a little bit blunter. I guess I was naive to assume that general intelligence was transferable to different domains and disciplines. I thought to become a Wall Street analyst, you needed to be probably a little bit above average in terms of your intelligence, your ability to reason, understand numbers, implications, infer about the future, etc. But honestly, some of the responses and comments I've seen from the Wall Street analyst regarding Tesla's battery invested aid makes it very clear that at least in the domain of understanding technology, engineering, manufacturing, a number of the Wall Street analysts are actual morons. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not smart at adding up numbers or winning at an IQ test or topping their school in some academic pursuit that doesn't mean anything. But in the real world, when it comes to understanding what this company Tesla is doing, the importance, the significance of what was announced and detailed and described at Battery Invest today, Seriously, it is embarrassing to hear some of the shit these analysts are coming out with. Here's my philosophy. If you don't know what the fuck you are talking about, it's far better not to talk. Or if you must talk, if somebody puts a gun to your head and says, listen, you've got to say something about this. Preface by saying, okay, just for the record, I literally don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but here's my opinion. Of course, I'm not surprised in the least. Ahead of Battery Invest today, I called this many times in my videos, suggesting there was a very high probability that the Wall Street analysts, the mainstream finance media, and many retail investors would see Battery Invest today and respond by going, uh, what did I just say? I don't understand. Now, to be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with not understanding. There is, however, a major problem when you imply that you have some understanding by speaking with authority from a platform on the mainstream finance media, through your analyst fund, etc., sharing your thoughts and opinion on something you have no fucking idea about. So please stop, guys. Like, it's okay to wave the white flag and say, I'm sorry, I'm out of my depth. I don't know what I'm talking about. S someone else deal with this. Please help me. I need help. I do not understand. Please help. Instead, they're just out here BSing and making themselves look like morons. And their opinions will not age well. For the people who actually understand the engineering behind uh, things, EV stuff, we, <laughs> this is big stuff. This is big deal. For the people on Wall Street who are listening to analysts that are, uh, I don't know, MBA trained or something. I don't know where their training came from, <laughs> but I'm telling you what, I couldn't believe it when I saw that the stock went down. That thing should be skyrocketing. That should I be to the moon. Sandy, did you just plug my merch store? 
Tesla stock to the moon. Well, thanks for the plug. Link in description, guys. Check them out. By the way, thanks so much to everyone who supported the Teespring merch store. I saw yesterday there's now over 1,000 products sold since July. Thank you so much for the support. I hope these t-shirts, mugs, etc. are firing up some interesting conversations, maybe even making you guys a few new friends. Let's get back to it. That thing should be skyrocketing. That should I be to the moon. Are you kidding? What you just heard was the gospel of, according to EV. You, you I, can't I, believe how excited we are here at Monroe. That slide is everything that says, uh, if, you, if you're investing in ICE vehicles, you're screwed because that is the key slide for everything. All the rest of the stuff, it doesn't matter. That one right there, that's, that's what happens when you have vertical integration. And I know I've heard lots of Harvard guys tell me I'm full of shit, but I'm telling you flat, this is what happens when you have an R&D center that gets a lot of money and gets a free reign on, hey, let's be the best on the planet. And that's what happens. And the boneheads that are, are saying, oh yeah, we're gonna sell short. Those clowns, I have no idea. They're not engineers. I don't know who they are, but they're not engineers. You know, this is a killer point from Sandy. I think the key distinction between the people that understand what Tesla is doing and understood Battery Invest today and those that don't is a simple understanding of how engineering works. Some basic fundamental physics, a little bit of engineering on top. Okay, I get it. If you don't have these basic core fundamental principles in your mind, you don't understand the way things are, how the world works, go down to the atoms, work your way up and understand every step in between, this probably makes absolutely no sense. And that's why we have these analysts saying things that are gonna be extremely embarrassing in a few years time. And I'm telling you, that slide should have been the wake up call for everybody to say it's time to get, a and by the way, my, my prediction, 2030, that's the end. That's when it's gonna flip. And that'll mean that other car companies are getting in, but that slide is the key slide for the whole future. That's it right there. Spot on from Sandy. And it's truly embarrassing to see how few of the mainstream finance media outlets have been discussing these numbers. One exception, Julia Chatterley, who spoke to Tasha Keeney of ARK Invest yesterday and actually led with this. This is great. She raised these points. Very important. Pretty much everyone else is like, oh, so, so nothing's happening for three years, huh? Is that, is that what you're saying? So, so it's a disappointment, huh? Uh huh, oh, it's a disappointment. Oh, okay. That was very disappointing, wasn't it? The thing that I look at is basically sitting in back of me right here. Did Tesla tell anybody that they were gonna go to a casting that size? Nope. I don't think many people saw it until I ripped apart the Model Y. And now this is obsolete. This is obsolete. This is only half of the size. The real size is double. And I, I, I said that I have no idea why they're not doing the front of the car as well. <laughs> now they, show, they showed last night that not only they're going to do the rear, they're doing the front and their battery pack is basically using the same kind of technique and technology. They didn't say anything about that. I think what Tesla does is, yeah, they warn their competition about what they're working on right now or what they think they've got in hand, but I have no clue what they've got sitting in, the, in reserve. I think that uh, Tesla likes to tease. I mean, sitting in front of me is the octo valve. Who's got that? Lots of people had uh, heat pumps, but these guys, they took what everybody else had and turned it into magic overnight. I mean, I have no idea what kind of a budget they got for R&D, for vertical integration and making things better. But I know for sure, we didn't have anything like that at Ford when I was working there, never. We did lots of R&D, but nothing, nothing, compared to this, I mean, battery technology, heating and cooling technology, aluminum castings that got, they've got their own blend of aluminum in. I mean, on and on and on. Even, uh, we'll, we're not there yet, but when we talk about the ATIS board, see that chip in the center? Uh, we can't, uh, we can't, we don't know how to make that thing. Uh, we can't, we, we can take every chip and take it to pieces, but that thing, that thing's scary. When you look at it from the other side, I mean, look at the number of joints. It's like impossible. This is impossible. How does it do that? Yeah, so industry expert tears down these chips all the time. That's literally what they do. They tear stuff down, they pull it apart, they figure out the materials, how it works, how much it costs to produce. It's impossible. This thing's impossible. Let that one sink in for a moment. So this thing is costing us a fortune trying to reverse engineer that chip. It's, it's gigantic and it's revolutionary. This is a better chip than NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been doing this forever. That's their, 
their job. And yet Tesla comes up and says, oh, well, thanks. We're not going to buy your chip anymore. We're going to buy, we're going to make our own. I just think they're not a car company. They're, they're, they're like Edison's lab or something. I, it's totally different for me. Tesla's in-house full self-driving chip design, the fact that they build a better chip than the industry leader within a few years after deciding, you know what? We need a better chip. Let's just figure out how to make one ourselves. This was a huge wake up call that pretty much everyone slept through like many of the other wake up calls. It's like Tesla is shouting from the rooftops, hey morons, look at what we're doing. This is really important. You can infer a lot from this. And everybody's just like, uh, I don't get it. Yeah, well, I don't get it. People like Sandy Munro understand the implications because they're actually looking at the tech, comparing it to what else is available and going, holy shit, Tesla is do, this is just, Wow. The thing that I look at with, uh, with Tesla is speed. How fast did they do everything? So John knows that he came over here in early 2018 and we looked at a pile of crap. That Model 3, <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. And here we are in 2020, two years later. And I told him, I said on TV that 175 parts for uh, a wheel inner plus who knows, 200 or so spot welds and whatnot. And the next thing you know, you got that thing sitting in back of me two years later. I don't even know how you made the machine tool fast enough. I am a tool maker. That's what I, I did for a living until I got lazy and decided to become an engineer. But at the end of the day, I'll tell you, that die right in back of us, that's a killer. That's, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And two years, here's the Model Y, bingo, here it is, problem solved. 170 parts down to one, but now remember it's going on both sides. That's got to be more like uh, four or 500 parts. All of a sudden they're gone. How big's my stamping shop now? How many welding guns do I need? How many robots do I need? I mean, he just chopped out with the front and the back. I don't even know if I need a, a body shop anymore. There should be a lot of guys in the stamping world. Uh, that are going to go, I hope that everybody doesn't go in his direction. I don't even know how he got the uh, press that makes this thing. I don't know how he got them done in two years either. It's just, I'm telling you, the guy, he's like Dr. Deming. Deming used to tell us all the time, you know, tell what, what you're doing. It doesn't matter anyways. And when the Japanese were coming to uh, basically kick our butts and um, the Japanese told us what they were doing and we didn't believe them. And we watched them gobble up the market share fancy that tesla doing exactly the same thing tesla hasn't been hiding their technology or their progress there's been a secret master plan that was published online an updated master plan they put events on autonomy day battery investor day all this stuff's out in the open tesla's literally saying hey guys here's our engineering improvements our manufacturing improvements here's the numbers here's what we're doing here's how long it's going to take to implement let's go meanwhile the rest of the auto industry is either standing still or still cleaning the pee from their pants after realizing the implications of what tesla announced years ago i think tesla is doing exactly the same thing i think he's uh he reads what what uh, Dr. Deming had to say, and uh, he implements it. Like I say, continuous design improvement, who ever heard of that? I mean, and yet sitting in front of me and that thing right there, the uh, Octo Valves had 13 design changes, 13 design changes since April until uh, basically last, I think they were here in July and showed us the new one and went, holy mackerel, I can't believe it. How do you make 13 design changes that quickly? It would take us a year at Ford to do that. So I think the big companies, as Bob said, acceleration, and as I put in my presentation, acceleration is what they've got. These guys move fast, and that's a tough job. I think I said one time, let's see how the elephants tap dance. Tesla can tap dance. I, I'm well, hoping that the rest of them can start figuring out how to do the same thing. Don't get your hopes up, Sandy. Hope you guys have found this video insightful. As I said, Sandy knows what he is talking about. He's one of the few people whose opinion regarding Tesla's engineering, manufacturing, and technology is worth taking to heart because the vast majority of analysts, people in the mainstream finance media and retail investors do not know what the fuck they are talking about and shouldn't be talking. As Sandy Munro alluded to earlier, the ice age ends this decade. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all.
And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Deposit $100 in your Webull account, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the roulette wheel, you'll either get Nike, GoPro or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.